The video that you are about to watch is the third chapter in my 12 part course on video production for small business owners and nonprofits. If you would like to start the course from the beginning, just go ahead and click the card icon that just appeared at the top of your screen. You are watching the free version of this course that I've made available on YouTube, which is totally fine. We will have a few commercial breaks, but hey, that's how we're able to keep everything free around here. The alternative is you can take my paid course on Thinkific. Up until this chapter, the experience has been pretty much the same on both platforms. But that being said, in this chapter, the students of mine who are taking the course through Thinkific are going to gain access to all of the footage that we shot when we were filming our demo commercial, and they're also about to get this really amazing Final Cut Pro library template that can be adapted to work with basically any business. If you would like to take the course on Thinkific, I've made it really affordable at only $100 for all 12 classes. I will give you a link to that down below in the video description. Without any further ado, let's begin the class. Hey folks, and welcome to chapter three in my 12 part course on video production made especially for small businesses and nonprofits. Here's what we're gonna cover in this chapter. We are gonna start by reviewing a few basic definitions just to make sure that everyone is on the same page and clear on terminology. Then I'm gonna give you a tour of the different windows that make up Final Cut Pro. And after that, I'm gonna recommend that you change a few different settings just to make things a bit more user-friendly. At the end, I'm gonna teach you a game-changing trick that will save you a ton of time when you go to create new videos in the future. Just in case any of you do not already own a copy of Final Cut Pro, I would like to remind you that Apple offers a free 90-day trial, and I will post a link to that down below in the video description. I've been using Final Cut Pro to edit almost every single video I've made since I was in college, and if there is one lesson that I have learned over the years that I would like to pass on to all of you, it is this. The key to a positive editing experience is the delicate balance of having your files organized and also having a good workflow so that you can very quickly process your footage in order to assemble the edit. Let's start by going over a few definitions. The Final Cut library, represented by this icon here, contains a combination of events, which are basically folders, and inside of those folders is where you store the different elements that make up your project, including your footage, music, sound effects, graphics, etc. It's also where you keep the project file, which is where the information about the edit itself is stored. To create a new library, event, or project, you will find all of those options here at the very top of the file menu. When you create a new library from scratch, Final Cut Pro will automatically create an event that is named the current date. Think of using events like your documents folder. Sure, you could dump all of your documents into one folder, and provided you don't have too many of them, you'll probably have no problem finding things. But when you start to accumulate hundreds of documents, that's when you really need some sort of a folder structure, or in this case, events. The general rule of thumb is you only want to have one project per library. But that being said, there are exceptions to the rule. Here's an example when it would be acceptable to have multiple projects inside of one library. Let's say your business or organization has more than one location. In chapter one, I suggested that you open your commercial by inserting shots of local identifiable landmarks because we are targeting a local audience. Well, if you have multiple locations, you could simply duplicate your project, swap out those first few shots of landmarks from your first location, insert landmarks from the second location, and just like that, you've got a brand new commercial that you can target at a new audience. Because those two versions would share the majority of files, it makes sense to keep both projects in one library. What you do not want to do is have one library that contains 10 projects, and all of those projects are completely different videos with different content. If you do, it'll completely overload your computer, it'll burn down your house and ruin your marriage. As I mentioned in chapter one, you can choose to keep your project on your local hard drive if you have enough free space, or you can utilize an external hard drive. Wherever you decide to keep it, the first thing you want to do is create a new folder because that way, if you do eventually need to move it to an external hard drive, everything is self-contained. Now, that being said, there are two places where you should never store your project. Those two places are the desktop and the documents folder. The reason why is because if you have iCloud Drive enabled, specifically the part where it backs up those two locations, 
it's going to try to upload all of those files to the cloud, which are massive, and it will bring everything, including your internet connection, to a screeching halt. If you do want to keep your project on your local computer, the place I recommend you store it is the Movies folder. I know a lot of you out there probably won't have a shortcut to the Movies folder on your sidebar, so let's do that together. I want you to open up a new Finder window, and then I want you to click where it says Finder here at the top left. Now let's click into Preferences and select Sidebar. Now all I need to do is check this box next to the Movies folder, and that way anytime I open a new Finder window, I have a handy shortcut easily accessible. Thank you so much for watching everyone, we will be right back. When you first open up Final Cut Pro, you'll find the browser window here at the top left. If you look here at the top, you'll notice we have three tabs. Starting with this first tab, this icon will show you what libraries you currently have open. And just a reminder, this once again is the icon for a library. And underneath that, you'll see the events that live inside that library. If we click over to this second icon, you'll see that we can access photos and videos stored inside of the Photos app, projects that have been created inside GarageBand, music stored inside of the Music app, and a whole bunch of sound effects that you probably didn't even know existed on your Mac. This last tab is where you can access your titles and generators. We are going to spend a lot of time here in a future chapter, but let me just say this. Final Cut Pro by itself does come with some very basic titles and effects, but if you want your content to stand out, this is where you can add third-party plugins to really take things to the next level. There are a lot of companies that make third-party plugins for Final Cut Pro, but nobody does it like MotionVFX.com. And on that note, I am happy to report that this course is now officially being sponsored by our friends at MotionVFX.com. Just to be clear, I've been a fan of these guys well before they agreed to sponsor my course, and I only work with companies that I love. So a big thank you to them, and we'll go over how to use some of their plugins in a future chapter. For now, let's continue where we left off. This window here is the preview window. Anytime you're scrubbing through your footage, this is where you will see that preview. Over here on the right, we have the inspector. Pretty much any time you ever want to make changes to anything, whether it's a video clip, effect title, the volume, it's all going to happen in this window. This bottom section is referred to as the timeline, and that is where the actual edit takes place. Now, just in case you don't see some of the windows that I just showed you, let me show you where you can find the controls to hide or reveal those sections. If you look here at the top right, we have three buttons. This button will hide or reveal the inspector. This next icon will hide or reveal the timeline, and here, just to the left of that, we have the toggle to hide or reveal the browser. It's good to get to know these buttons because sometimes when you're working on a project, you want to see a really big preview window, and to get that, you need to hide the browser or the inspector. Hey folks, I hope you're enjoying the class. We will be right back after this brief commercial break. Before we start creating content, there are a few important settings that I want to review with you guys, so if you're following along at home, I want you to click where it says Final Cut Pro here at the top left. Then let's go into Preferences. Let's now click over to the Playback tab, and let's have a little talk about this option right here where it says Rendering. When you add something like a title or a special effect to your video, your computer has to process that information, which uses your computer's resources. Now, if you have one of the newer Macs, for example, the ones that have the M1 chip technology built into them, your computer is probably fast enough that it can start to render when you're not using it for 0.2 seconds. If you have an older computer, you might want to consider changing that to something like 10 seconds. That way, it performs its best while you're using it, and it can process all of that background information when you're often going to the bathroom or having lunch. Let's now click over to the next tab where it says Import. Here at the top, we have a really important setting that we need to talk about. When you import footage into your library, it can either reference those files or it can create a second copy of them. The default option is to copy to library storage location. The good part about that option is it means that everything that you put into your library is self-contained. The problem with it is the size of that file is about to explode through the roof. So for that reason, I very strongly recommend that you change it to leave files in place. The last few settings that I recommend you change are as follows. 
I recommend that you tell Final Cut to automatically balance the color, fix audio problems, and remove silent channels. Final Cut has this really insane AI feature where it can make a lot of basic corrections. And just by checking these boxes, it's going to automatically apply those to every single clip. I have a handful of other settings that I'd like to show you. And again, these are all about making your life a little bit easier. The next one is for those of you out there who are going to store your files locally. But that being said, even if you do store your files on an external hard drive, you may find this tip very useful. Let's close that window. And at this point, I want you to click on this downward pointing arrow at the top left of your screen. This is one of the ways that you can import footage. By the way, another option is you can use command and the letter I as in igloo. And what I'd like you to do at this point is navigate to your movies folder. To get there, I'll just click on my home folder and here it is inside. You're going to need to come back to this location a lot. Trust me. So what we're going to do is create a very simple shortcut. Just secondary click, also known as right click, on the movies folder. And one of the options that you will see here is favorite. So that way in the future, when you need to import footage, you can quickly access that location. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Most people who teach Final Cut Pro will tell you that anytime you're creating a new video, you always start by creating a new library. What I'm going to teach you is an alternative method that will save you a ton of time down the road. Instead of creating a new library every time you create a new video, what you can do is create a library that is preloaded with all of the different assets that are going to consistently appear in every single video. Then when you need to create a new video, you just duplicate that library and it's got everything good to go, including your logo, shots of the interior and exterior of your business, background music, headshots, pre-rendered graphics, etc. Think Epic students, at this point, we're going to talk about the file that you can now download, which is called Business Library Template. What I want you to do is to start by duplicating that file so that no matter what, you can always go back to the original. The way to do that is to just click on it so that it's highlighted and then press Command D on your keyboard. Now you want to rename the duplicated file the name of your business, followed by the words Library Template. When you're done, open up the library that has your business name on it and let's start to customize it. For starters, if there are any events that do not line up with the type of content that you're going to be creating, you can remove them by secondary clicking on them and then select Move Event to Trash. Alternatively, if you need to add any additional events, you can do that once again by going to File, New, Event. At this point, let's start to load our assets into the different events. Let's start with the logo. I'll click on the logo event, and now I'll click the Import button at the top left, and I'm going to point it to the place in my computer where I have all my different logos. You remember how a moment ago I told you to change the file storage option to leave files in place? Well, because we are creating a template, for this particular example, we do actually need to change that back to copy to library. Now, all you need to do is repeat that process with any other files that are going to consistently appear in every single video. When you're done, you will want to quit out of Final Cut Pro, go back to the library template that you just created and duplicate it again, just to keep it safe. So now, anytime you want to create a new project, all you have to do is duplicate that library and then you're good to go. In just a moment, I'm going to give my Thinkific students their homework assignment, but before we get to that, I want to give you a little preview of what we're going to cover in Chapter 4. In Chapter 4, we are going to begin to assemble our edit. I have a bunch of shortcut keys that I'm going to teach you, and those of you who are participating on Thinkific will get a PDF guide that you can print out at home. Okay, Thinkific students, here is your homework assignment. You should have downloaded the folder of footage from Chiquessa Chocolate, and inside of that folder, you will find the library file, subfolders containing all of the assets to our project, and what I want you to do is open up the Chiquessa Chocolate library file, and I'll walk you through the next steps. We're going to begin the process of importing the footage from our folders into the corresponding events. It's super easy. I'm going to do the first one with you, and your homework is to finish them. Let's start with the logo. I'm going to click on the logo event so that it's highlighted, and then I'm going to click on the import arrow here at the top left. Next, I'll point this to the contents of the corresponding logos folder, and just make sure that you switch this setting back to leave files in place, 
and then click Import Selected. By having the entire folder highlighted, it'll import everything that lives inside of that folder. When we go back to this browser window, you'll see that now all of those files are visible here in the browser window. Just for the heck of it, let's do one more together. This time, I'm going to import the product footage. I'm going to start by selecting the event, then I'll go to Import, highlight the folder, and you'll notice that this time I do not need to switch the copy function. Why? Because it always resumes from the last settings that were used. So now when I click Import Selected, once again, those files are visible right here in the browser. Okay, that does it for this class. Again, in the next chapter, we are going to begin to assemble our edit. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Class dismissed.